I'm here today to talk to you about codependency and how it relates to the issues of addiction. And um, I do want to share with you that I am a recovering codependent as well as a recovering addict, and a recovering addict in several areas. Years and years and years ago, I did start my recovery from several different kinds of addictions. And I found for myself it wasn't enough just to recover from my problems in addiction, that I sobered up, so to speak, and life got worse. And I went to the helping community to, to find out what was wrong with me. I, I, I began to have the sense that I was just horribly defective, as my parents had already t always told me, and that <clears throat> life was forever going to be as awful as it seemed to be. And the message I got back, generally speaking, from the treatment community was, yes, you are as sick as you think you are, and there is... Uh, if you just work your program better, you wouldn't feel the way you feel. It got me very, very angry when I heard that for once. I started to um, make a decision that maybe there was a different answer than that because I just couldn't stand the pain. And I could not, uh, I could no longer, because of my recovering process, uh, kill myself. As I thought for many years I could do that to end all the pain. So I decided I had to do something to relieve my pain. And what I'm going to share with you is the result of my own personal recovery from the pain into wellness. And it is about codependency. The first thing I want to do for you is define what codependency is. And then go on into talking about its etiology and then how it does relate to addictions. My definition of codependency basically states that um, that it's about immaturity. It's really about immaturity. And if you get anything from me today, I hope you get that. Codependency is a state of dis-ease, and I separate um, the word dis-ease into two sections like that. It's a state of dis-ease. That means the person is without ease. It's a state of dis-ease caused by child abuse that renders a person unable to experience appropriate levels of self-esteem, set functional boundaries with others, own his or her own reality, deal with adult dependency issues around needing and wanting, and express his or her reality with moderation. So as I see the disease, there are five core symptoms of the illness, one around self-esteem, which has to do with the internal experience of one's own preciousness. It has to do with setting boundaries, which helps a person protect their reality from another person's reality and to keep their reality from offending somebody else it has to do with knowing what a person's reality is or knowing who they are. It has to do with take care, taking, learning to take care of one's issues around needing and wanting. It overall has to do with expressing reality in a moderate form in your daily walk. Now, every one of those core symptoms, as I see codependency, is an issue of immaturity. As I see this state of disease, I also see that as a result of being a person who is unable to do those things, a person who is codependent lives in a constant state of internal stress. You know, it's stressful not to experience appropriate levels of self-esteem, to either always be looking up at other people and having other people be your higher power and being better than you are or looking down on other people, judging them and being better than. Do you know that that creates a lot of stress? It's also very stressful not being able to protect yourself as well as it's very stressful when you know you are an offender and you can't stop it. It's very, very stressful not to be able to own your own reality politically. Another way to say that, it's very stressful not knowing who you are. It's very stressful to have who you are defined by somebody else. It's very, very stressful not knowing even what your needs are, and even more stressful not even knowing what your wants are. Needs are what you have to have in order to survive in a healthy way. You know, codependents don't know how to figure out what those are and how to take care of them. Or we're on the other end of the extreme. We know what they are, we take care of them, but thank you very much, I will not let you help me do that take care of them when I can't, that's stressful. You know, there's two kinds of wanting. The big ones and the little ones. Little ones are things like, I wanted a yellow Cadillac. They don't matter that much, but they do bring you joy. What's a big one? A big one is what direction your life takes. Do you know that most codependents never hassle that issue? They're constantly living in reaction to other people. Why would they do that? 
It's because they've never been taught to know what they want. They've been shamed or used around their issues of wanting, and it's very stressful not to know how to take care of that in your life. And you know it's very stressful when you don't express your reality moderately, when you blast it all out or hold it all in and waffle back and forth between those extremes. Codependence as a result of not being able to do those five things for themselves live in a constant state of internal stress. And because of that, they engage in negative control issues of other people and then seek relief from the stress through addictions. Addictions are about leaving, I believe, they are about relieving the stress of codependency. Addictions blot out reality. Any addiction will do. Whether you're talking about chemical dependency, which of course does it in a huge way, or you're talking about work addiction or sex addiction or love addiction or being busy or being a religious addict. Any addiction will do. Addictions are about relieving reality. What reality do we have to relieve ourselves from? We have to relieve ourselves from the knowledge of being a little person in a great big body. I have found in my recovery from codependency that more than anything else at all, it's about embracing reality. The reality of who I am and the reality of who you are. And that's painful, scary. There's also a lot of humor to it, too. But it takes a big person, you know, to embrace reality. And it's very, very easy to escape reality through any addictive process. Let me define addiction, too, so you know what I mean. I have a broader definition. I think than most people do in the field. I believe that an addiction is any process that relieves intolerable reality. And because of the intense relief it provides becomes an increasing priority, taking time and attention from other priorities, creating harmful consequences that are ignored. I believe all that's true because as I've watched people recover, recover from addictions, one of the things I notice that is if you sober them up from one addiction, another one emerges. And you get that one and sober them up from whatever that is and another one pops up. Sober them from that one and get them to stop it and another one pops up and people bounce from one addictive process to the other. When I was watching that, I was curious and said to myself, why do people do that? What is going on that they need to do that? Well, again, I think it goes back to relieving yourself from intolerable reality. Now, I'm an addict on many different levels. I'm recovering from alcoholism. I'm recovering from sex addiction. I'm recovering from love addiction. I'm recovering from work addiction. And I have this thing called the minor eating disorder. What that means is I'm minimizing the fact that when I'm in pain, I eat. And I can sop up all my emotional pain through eating, especially carbohydrates. But I don't want to stop that, you see. So I'll just tell you it's a minor problem, so I don't have to deal with it, and I can minimize it into oblivion and do something else. It all is about relieving myself from the reality of my situation. Now, one of the things I found in my own recovery from codependency is that as I learned how to experience appropriate level of self-esteem, have boundaries so that I could protect my reality and keep my reality from offending you, and as I started literally owning my own reality politically, in other words, knowing what I looked like and how to manage my own body, knowing what I thought or how I gave meaning to incoming data, when I started knowing what I was feeling and what I was not feeling, and when I started tracking what I was doing and what I was not doing, do you know what? I started to feel worse. What was I getting in touch with? All the harmful consequences of not knowing my reality in the first place all the harmful consequences of not having boundaries in the first place. All the consequences I, I had in my life are those issues of unmanageability as a result of not esteeming myself appropriately and allowing other people to offend me and being an offender myself. That's why in codependency recovery you'll find that sobering a person up from codependency, getting their awareness of how they're a little person and a great big body makes their life worse. Because what are they getting in touch with? Reality. Is reality going to stink for a while? If you have put yourself in a position where you no longer claim reality or even know how to claim reality in the first place, what's going to happen to you in your life process? It isn't going to work very well. And as you go into the process of embracing reality as it is, you're going to find that you have been living inappropriately and dysfunctionally, and in that have a lot of things going on in your life 
that aren't okay, and then you have to go about cleaning the wreckage of that up? That is very painful and uncomfortable and not easy. And I think that's why most people really resist codependency recovery. Recovery is real simple. It's not only about embracing reality. It's also about growing up, becoming a big person in your big body, and facing reality as it is and acting like an adult. Acting like an adult is about one major thing. It's about learning to close your mouth and breathe and not react to whatever situation is going on in your life now. It's about learning how to become an observer and living in action for yourself rather than in constant reaction to what's going on around you. That's what it's really about. And sobriety, I believe, for a codependent is learning how to be a moderate person. You see, another really interesting characteristic of this disease of codependency, and it's in that fifth core symptom, difficulty expressing your reality in moderation, is that we experience this disease in the extreme. We experience it in the extreme, we act it out in the extreme, creating a lot of chaos in our lives. And the problem with that symptom is that we learn that living in the extreme is normal, bouncing back and forth in the extremes of the illness is normal, so that when we sober up from codependency and start to act in a moderate way, life gets boring. And we have this terribly uncomfortable feeling that we're not reacting enough in our lives and taking care of business, that we should be doing more than what we're really doing. Does that cause discomfort? You bet it does. It's like somehow I'm not doing enough. So I found it was problematic to recover from my codependency because I lost my whole sense of reality and had to embrace another one. But the thing about it was I was moving out of a real skewed reality into what I believe reality really is for me. And in that whole process, I found a lot of pain and a lot of fear, but I also found a lot of joy that brought my life a whole lot of meaning.